Uh, and I'm not going to say this is because First Lady is in here this morning, but I'm not going to use her as a visitor all right, all right, uh, this morning, okay? Uh, Brother Mike is on his post today. He didn't Amen. go fishing this morning. <laughs> so thank you, Lord, for that. <laughs> okay. Exodus 32, 26 says, Then Moses stood in the gates of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered together, gathered themselves together unto him. And that's what we want to do. We want to keep the Lord on our side. Uh, it's good to have... Uh, Lady Nick is with us this morning. I'd like to say something else this morning to tell us about your experience with the Lord since you've been away from us. <laughs> you know what? Um, can, can I do it right here? Yes. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see you all and be in the house of the Lord. You know, it's been a trying week for all of us. Yeah. Our hearts been hurting about the hatred that goes on with the church. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's all. That's how to do that happen this week. And as a mother, it really disturbs me yeah. you know, because they're innocent children. Yeah, yeah. But God is still in control. Yes, and yes. We have to stand, and we have to stand in His love, like you said. We're on the Lord's side. Amen. Yes. Through everything that we've been through, we still just gotta give Him praise. Amen. 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 You back there, Bishop? Would you like to say something else this morning? Oh no, no, no. Then I'm going to read to you this morning. <clears throat> Shake and shine. We are all unique and special. Amen. Resembling the shells washed up on the shore. Created to glorify God. With talent, gifts, and so much more. Through battered by life's angry waves, God holds us in his house to stand and give us a sign for revenue. I need to hear his voice this morning. Amen. Whatever the Lord lay on your heart, that's what I want. Amen.
in secret prayer. Matthew's 24, 42 through 44. 
if you would just stand for the reading and the reverence of God's word. Amen. Let's see if we can share a little bit from this passage. Verse 42 says, therefore, keep watch. Somebody say, keep watch. Keep watch. Because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But understand this, that if the owner of a house had known at what time of the night that the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. For a few minutes, if we can use as a subject, I just want to use the subject as a question. And the question is, will you be ready? Somebody look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, will you be ready? Amen. Take your seats, God. Thank you. Thank you, O oh God, for this opportunity to share your word. We ask you, Father, to move by your spirit now and speak clearly, O oh God, that we may hear, understand, and apply. We honor you, God. We praise you. And we give you all the glory in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. To our musicians and our singers, thank you all. In this passage of scripture, Jesus here is speaking in something called a parable. And we understand that in those days, Jesus was speaking in parables, which is simply a short story because he was trying to clearly um, dictate to them or get them to understand things that were coming in scenarios by way of giving them a story. Amen? Amen. Isn't it amazing that when you can you can read a story to a child, you can captivate a child a child's attention with a good story. Amen. Have I got a witness? Yeah. Um, every once in a while a baby will come to you and say, Will you read me a story? It's something about the way they write the story that the baby learns the lesson that is being taught through the story. Have I got a witness? And here we find that Jesus was speaking to the disciples by way of parables, which is a story. Now we understand that as he was preparing the disciples for what was to come, he used these parables to expound and make clear what he was talking about. Here, if you look at it, he says, he told them in verse 42, he says, therefore keep watch. The Bible tells us that we ought to, at all times, we ought to watch and pray. Amen. Have I got a witness? You, you, you can't be effective if you're praying and you're not watching. Because you can be praying and the enemy can subtly sneak up on you in the middle of your prayer. Amen. But if you're watching while you're praying, then what's happening, and not only are you seeing, but you're also enhancing the thing called your discernment. Yes. You're also enhancing this thing called spiritual insight. And I, I don't know about you, but if you're praying in the spirit, God will begin to show you things in the spirit that you would never see in the physical realm. Have I got a witness? So when the Bible tells us that we ought to watch and pray, that means that we ought to be on our post at every opportunity that we have. Have I got a witness? Here he says in verse 42, he says, therefore watch. Then he gives us a reason because he says, because one, you don't know when the Lord is coming. Amen. That being said, we know here that he is speaking on the end of time, but we need to look at that in a completely global aspect and say, we don't know when he's coming to take us home. We don't know when he's coming to shift our situation. We don't know when he's coming to reconcile us with a broken family. We don't know when he's coming to mend our broken hearts. We don't know when he's coming to deliver us. But I need you to understand that if you expect to feel his presence when he comes, you've got to make sure that you're ready. Amen. And how do you get ready? You get ready by spending time with God. We spend time, quality times with our booze. I mean, come on, somebody. I, if we ain't booed up, we ain't going to understand that. But if you if, if you got yourself a significant other, sometimes you like spending that quality time with your significant other. If you're somebody that's by yourself, sometimes you like spending quality time all by yourself because you ain't got to explain nothing. You ain't got to talk to nobody. You you ain't got 
got to do nothing for nobody. It's just me, myself, the Lord, and we are in a peaceful place, and I'm enjoying the Come on here, somebody. So therefore, we have to make sure that if we want to be ready, Josh, we've got to be intentional about our quality time that we spend with the Lord. Not just in prayer, but sometimes being quiet and listening for his voice. Not just that, but spending time with his in his word. Not just that, but making sure that we're available to be used by him because when it's time for him to come, we want him to come catching us doing what pleases him. He's speaking to them in this parable and he's simply talking because he's trying to align them and answer the question because the question came from the disciples asking him, when will the end come? Um, and it's amazing how you walk with someone that is so profound and pro prolific in what he does and then you see the miracles that he performs but then you want to ask him a question when would the end come not realizing that he's going to tell you something that I really don't think that you're ready for. He didn't tell them the answer that they were looking for but he gave them the answer that they needed. If we look in this part of the parable, Jesus began in verse number 36. Mm -hmm. With no one knows, he says, not even the angels in the heavens, mm -hmm. nor the Son, but only the Father in heaven, when the, he only, the only one that knows when the hour will come. Now watch this. Yes. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. He says, not even the Son. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. But we understand that the Trinity is... God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We are taught, we, are, we, are, we have learned that the three are one. Yeah. Yeah. So isn't it amazing that if the three is one, why only one knows when he's coming? All right. All right. Uh, only one knows out of the God here when he's coming simply because the three are one. They function as one. They do the things. They have the same authority and the power as one. But there's only one ultimate head and that is God the Father. All right. And if God the Father says that I'm not even sharing with my Son or the Holy Ghost, who is part of me in my movement, then I need everyone to know that nobody knows when I'm coming, so you ought to be ready at all times. If Jesus was still walking the earth in the form of a man, he would not know when he was coming, but he would have to walk every day in preparation of being ready, not knowing when the day was coming. Yes, yes, yes. Isn't it amazing? We find people that will tell you that they're going to come to church when they, when, when, I, 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 I'll show up when I'm ready. Oh, wow. Have you met any of those people? I'm, I'm going to start going back to church when I'm ready. Well, baby, I come to tell you, you'll never be ready. Because even in church, you're not ready. You're not ready. Because some folks show up at church, Josh, with the Bible that they never read. Some of them show up with a superficial praise. Some of them show up expecting something and not bringing nothing to the table themselves. Folks show up at church because it's a thing to do. And I want to just say that I came to church on Sunday. Some folk come to church just because they're tired of people bugging you to come to church. But when you really got your mind set on the Lord and you show up, church don't start when you get in the building, but church starts before you went to sleep the night before and when you got up and on your way to the building. So when you get into the building, you got something to give to God. So when you give something to God, he can take it and mash it up and press it down and shake it together and overflow it and give it back to you. Because if you give him a little, he can give you a lot. And when you leave here, you feel more ready for what he has for you. So I come to tell you that when he comes, uh, you need to know that you're ready by what you are doing while you are waiting for him to come. Uh, we find, beloved, that here, not only is he referring to the end of time uh, for all creation, but he is also speaking about when the time or when your time will come. Amen. See, we, 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 we plan for the next 37 years and don't even know if we got the next 37 minutes. But we have all of these big plans. I'll never forget my wife shared with me about somebody at her job that passed away. And when they went in to begin to start cleaning the, the house, they, they went up under her mattress and they found envelopes full of money that had, had had stuff written on it about the places that they had planned to go and the monies that were set aside for their planned vacation that this person was called home and never got a chance to meet the plan because the planner called her home. Come on here, somebody. 
So what I'm trying to say is, was she ready for what she had planned or was she ready for what the master had planned for her? Because listen, I can make all the plans I want, but I should not forget about who's coming for me. I should not forget about his grace and mercy. I should not forget about my fellowship with him. I should not forget about enhancing my relationship with him. I shouldn't forget about spending time with him. Matter of fact, every single time I put a little dollar in the envelope to plan for a plan, I ought to say thank you, Jesus, for the dollar that you gave me to be able to store up for something that I have planned. And then if you are polite enough to let me see the vacation, to you be the glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We find here that as he's speaking, he's referring to the end of time and he's also referring to the time that is coming. In verse in chapter number 25, we find that he was speaking and he used an example of, of the ten virgins here. This is there another parable? He had ten virgins. And if you know the story, it says he had five that was wise and five that was foolish. Mm -hmm. The word came that there was going to be a wedding. The word came that it was going to be a wedding. And they needed to get themselves together. Have I got a witness? Mm -hmm. And five of them, it says, five of them followed the orders. And the other five felt as if they still had some time. Right. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, five of them says, I'm going to spend this time to be ready for the time. And the other five says, we still have some time because they got a word that the wedding was going to be delayed because the bridegroom was running late. Watch, watch. I like this parable because even though it doesn't display this, if you use your spiritual imagination, you can begin to look at this in a different perspective. Jesus wasn't running late because the Bible says he's never late, he's never early, but he's always on time. And so therefore, Jesus wasn't running late. Watch, the Holy Spirit wasn't running late. But every so once in a while, he may delay his coming to find out if those that are supposed to be ready are really going to make him their priority. Oh, I want you to catch this. It said five of them, as soon as they got the word, what did they do? They got their oil and they trimmed it in their lamp with some extra oil. And the other five was kind of poking around doing what they wanted to do. And when they heard that the delay was there, they sat and said, ooh, baby, we got a little while longer. Can I bring this to today's time? Let me bring it to today's time. Because you have some people like Chantel and, you know, and, 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 and on Friday, she know the church is coming on Sunday. So what she does on Friday Day is her mind begins to shift to her coming to service, not church, because she realizes she is the church. So she lets her mind get shift to now taking the church into the building so that she can have service. She's not coming to do anything but meet up with the presence of the Lord that's in the building that she's bringing the church. But she got some friends. She got some friends. Watch. She, she told them. She says, baby, church starts at 8 o'clock. But for some reason, this week, Josh, this week is something going on in the building so we're going to move church to 9 30 and now we got some folk that go stay in the club on saturday night where they should have left at 12 30 or 12 40. now they're going to stay until two o'clock last call for alcohol and then they're going to stay when they get home they're going to sleep for two or three hours get up with alcohol still on their breath trying to wobble their way into the church house because they made a promise to chantel and not realizing that chantel says i got to cut off what's going to keep me from getting into the house early enough so that I got everything that I need when I get into the house to feel his presence, to receive from him because if he comes back when I walk in the building, I want to make sure that I'm ready. I want to make sure I'm looking good. I want to make sure my attitude is right. I want to make sure that my mind and my heart is in the right place. I shouldn't be thinking about Pookie who got my number before I left. I shouldn't be thinking about the last dance. I shouldn't be thinking about how good the DJ was, but when I got that rap to do because I wasn't ready, but I showed up anyway. Uh -huh. When I show up, what happens is I got too many things that are preventing me from being ready if he walked in the room at that moment. My question is, will you be ready? He says the five virgins, five of them just decided that they was going to chill. And then the midnight hour when everything was closed, when there wasn't nothing convenient, watch this. When it wasn't nothing convenient, they got word that the bridegroom had showed up. Mm -hmm. 
Josh, they looked over at you and said, bro, man, uh, it's time. I need, I need a little bit of your oil, doc. But, but Josh says, no, nah, brother, because if I gave you some of mine, not that I don't like you, uh -huh. mm -hmm. but if I gave you some of mine, then that makes me be in line for disobedience too. Amen. Right? Amen. And one thing I found out is, I ain't been this faithful this long to miss my blessing because you wasn't ready. Right. Have I got a witness? Yeah. If we're supposed to be in this thing together, if you had had a little bit, maybe I could have gave you a little bit and it would have made enough for you to make it. But you ain't got now a bit and now you want me to give you some of my extra. So now that I'm short, come on here. I, I can, when you stand before the judgment seat, God ain't going to say, well, you know, since you gave him some of your oil, I'm going to let you come in. No, God is going to say, I told you. Yes, Have I got a witness? He said, I didn't tell you to share with your brother. I told you to make sure you had. I told him to make sure he had. If you're the only one to make sure he had, it's just like the talents. I'm going to take his talent and give it to you because you was faithful over what I gave you. Yes. So the same thing goes when he's telling us we don't know when the time is going to come for him to come. You can't party like it's 1999 and call yourself getting ready. Uh, come on here, somebody. If, if you haven't gotten partying out of your system and partying is more prevalent in your life than Jesus is, then you need to reevaluate where you want to spend eternity. Because I come to tell you, in the world that we're living in now, there is evidence that he's coming back more sooner than later. He is giving us warning signs that he is yet on his way back. He's allowing us to know and understand that we still got a few minutes to get it right. Don't be like the robber on the cross. The robber waited until the last minute. He just so happened to get it in before he took his last breath. But there's a whole lot of people that have left this earth, Josh, that ain't had a chance to tell God, forgive me for all of my unrighteousness. And I come by to tell you, you're going to stand in the midst of the judgment seat one day. And God is either going to say, well done, come on in. Or he's going to say, get away from me, you worker of iniquity. I do not know you. Don't bust hell wide open because you're trying to wait too long. But the question is, will mm -hmm. you be ready? Yes, sir. Matthew 24 and 38. This is an example that he began to use. In chapter 24, Jesus here uses Noah as an example to illustrate and expound on this parable. He states this. He states that this will happen just like it did in Noah's days. He went warning and even allowed for Noah to do what most folks thought was crazy. Sometimes in getting ready for your departure, God will have you do some things that folks think are crazy. Amen. Have I got a witness here? Amen. It, 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 I tell you, it's, it's those things where it's like, child, you used to just go to church on Sunday. Hmm. Now, you in church on Tuesday. You in church on Wednesday. Hmm. What's going on at that church that you got to be there so long? One thing that I found out is it's just like Noah. If God says that this is where you need to be for this amount of time and this is what you need to do, you're not going to always be able to explain why you're doing what you're doing. But they're going to still inquire. And some folks are going to be curious to follow you. Other folks are just going to be nosy and want to talk about you. But I need you to know that every time the enemy sends somebody to talk about you, to distract you, that's just clear indication that you're that much closer to the assignment that Jesus has for you to fulfill. Come on, devil. Bring your best shot. You want to hit me with that one? Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, you rocked me with that one because I wasn't expecting my partner to do to do me like that. I, I wasn't expecting my homegirl, my homeboy to talk about me like that. But I got my eyes fixated on Jesus. Noah was sitting there building an ark. He was putting together the wood because the instructions came. And God told him, I want you to do it this way and that way. This is what I want you to use. He even let him know, I want you to do what I said, dude. Don't worry about what nobody. And listen to me. The enemy always ceases an opportunity to come do something to you especially when he knows that you're on assignment from the Lord. And especially when he understands that the assignment, once it's fulfilled, will do more damage to the kingdom of the devil than it would to anything else. He will try to mess you up. Watch this. I 
need you to know that when he sends folks your way, he ain't going to send folks that don't matter to you, but he's going to send folks that's got some significance in your life. He's going to send folks that when they say something to you, their words cut you deep. But I want you to understand that the Bible says, if you hold your peace, and let the Lord fight your battles. Yeah, these brothers can come up and say what they want to. And every so once in a while, you've got to just speak it in your spirit. Peace, be still. Peace, be back up from me, devil. I'm on assignment for the Lord. If you should, you should have took me out before I made up my mind that for, for Jesus I live and for Jesus I die. And in him, I have my being. And since you let me get this much closer to Jesus, you may as well back because I got some wood that I'm sharpening up and I stick you right where it counted. You don't back up off of me. You better let the enemy know that God got me on assignment and I'm not going to stop until the assignment. Noah kept building. Noah kept building. Noah kept building. This was the way that God was warning people around them that something was about to happen and it was going to happen in the magnitude that that thing that he was building was going to be the difference in who was going to live and who was going to die. What am I trying to say? Chantel, if you've got to come to church three days a week because that's what God says, I want you to understand that he's doing something. He's building something around you because something around you has got to live and something else else has got to die. And when he comes to do the separating like he did with the wheat and the terror, he said let it all grow together and at my time I'll separate it. Yes, it's the same thing that he'll do when he puts you on the side. Right. Yes. So when he told Noah that Noah did it and when the flood came, what happened? God said take your wife, take your children, take their spouses, take two of every animal. I'm getting ready to tear this thing up. Nobody knew that he was coming. Therefore, nobody was ready other than Noah. Amen. Not even his folks was ready. Watch. His folks wasn't ready, but because God appointed him to be ready, they listened to him as he listened to God. Yes. Pulled them in. They moved on. Right. Now we have the world destroyed. And then we have the world to be able to be repopulated. Why? Because somebody was ready yes, when yes, God came. Yes, yes, yes. Have I got a witness? Yes, so these five virgins, five of them went into the wedding. And the other five, when they finally got there. Mm. <laughs> you know them folks that was partying? And when they, they woke up and they got to church, brother, they, they came in. And they talk about, we're going to get the last part of church. And they walk in and the pastor said, uh, uh, may the Lord watch in between me and thee while we're absent. Right. And you mean church is over? Well, yeah, baby, you slept in church. Amen, uh, amen. You, you couldn't get up. And so if that's Jesus, Jesus is saying, get away from me. Right. You worker of iniquity, I don't know you. That's why it's important for us to make sure that when we hear from God, we show up and respond to his call. That's the reason why. Because we don't know what God, we got to stop bargaining with God and showing up only if it benefits us. Baby, I come by to tell you that anytime God calls you, it benefits you. It benefits that he trusts me enough to call me to do an assignment. It benefits me enough that he, he loved me enough to bring breath in my body. It benefits me enough that I got the activities of my limb. It benefits me enough that I got a Bible to read. It benefits me enough I got breath in my body to say hallelujah. It benefits me enough that he loves me and trusts me to be a blessing to somebody else. It benefits me. I don't have to have this great this, that, and the other. All I got to know is that Jesus loves me enough to let me live yet another day and I realize it benefits me to breathe. Matthew 24 and 29 in the NASB version says, and they did not understand until the flood came mm -hmm. and took them all away. Yes, yes, yes. So will the coming of the Lord, the Son of Man, be. Yes. So as we get to the main part of our text, we find that Jesus says, therefore, which has the Greek meaning implying the conclusion of a process and reasoning. When he says, therefore, we understand something was set up before it. And now we're going to come to the conclusion of it. And he got to the conclusion when he says, therefore, keep watch. Because you do not know what day your Lord will come. But understand this. And this is the part I get. He says, if an owner might, if you knew that while you was down here filming the service, 
and having some time with the Lord. That day day was going to be at your back window going in to steal your fishing poles. Amen. There's only, there's only three things that he can steal that you're going to be mad about. One is your fishing poles, the other one is your cameras, and the other is your DJ equipment. Amen. And they come up in there, they're going to have some problems. Right. Have I got a witness? Amen. And if you knew Day Day was coming, it, you, you wouldn't be putting something on the outside to prevent him from coming in, but I bet you'd get you a Rottweiler sitting at the, at, the, at, the, at the door and sitting waiting for him to come in so that Rottweiler can tag him up. You, you, you probably have a booby trap or something for when he walked up, or, or you would have probably called Mother Maddie and said, Mother, I, I, I ain't going to be able to come down today because they day getting ready to break in my house, and I, I, I got to help him be introduced to somebody before he get introduced to the Lord. I really, I really need to make sure because I, I, I Woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. And Jesus told me Day Day was coming to break in my house. So I'm on this service this morning because I need to keep him uh, from getting in my house. And Jesus says here, if the owner of the house knew when the robber was coming, he would prevent his house from being robbed. I love that example. Simply because we can't prepare for things that we don't know about. And God is the kind of God, if he told you every single thing, we would wait until the very last minute to get our house in order. Therefore, nobody knows when he's coming, so nobody knows how long you got. So since you don't know how long you got, you better sacrifice and get it ready right now. What do I mean? You better make it up in your mind that God is all that I need. You better get it in your mind that when I give him praises, that, that when praises go up, blessings come down. I better get it in my mind that when I worship, worship sets the atmosphere for me. I better get it in my mind that Jesus is the best friend that I could ever have. I've got to get it in my mind that if my friends and family forsake me, God says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I've got to get it in my mind that one of these mornings it won't be very long. You're going to look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going to come on here somebody. And since I know I got to go, I may as well not wait when you're getting ready to leave out of town. You don't wait until the day you're leaving to buy your ticket. But when you know you're about to go, about three weeks to a month before you leave, you want the best price on your ticket. So you buy your airline ticket so you can get it at a good deal. Well, I come by to tell you, ain't no bargaining and deals in Jesus. If you really want to see the, the maker eye to eye and face to face, you better act like you're taking a trip. Buy your ticket early. How do you get your ticket early? You say, I believe that Jesus, he died for my sin, and that God raised him up, and he's now in heaven sitting at his right hand. I believe that when he went on the cross, he took my sins, and he left them there. I believe that since he died, I don't have to suffer like I would have had to suffer since he Just 
about in Galatians the fruits of the spirit ah, come on here somebody you can't have love if you don't have forgiveness have I got a witness because the Bible declares how can you say you love me who you've never seen and you don't love your brother who you see every day you're really just telling yourself a lie because don't nobody else believe it anyway. Yes, yes. Have I got a witness? Yes. How, how, how is it that the moment somebody says something and impresses that nerve that you're about ready to shake them loose and yes. walk away from, it, that that's not exercising a thing called patience? Yes, yes sir. How is it that 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 that, 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 that somebody says something to make you feel bad and you're ready to cut them or what? That's not exercising meekness yes, sir. or temperance. Have I got a witness? Yeah. How is it that when you go through the first little thing you go through, you're ready to give up? That's not that's not that, not showing long suffering. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Come on here, somebody. Yeah. If you hate the people that's down the street or around the corner, you're not loving your neighbor. Yeah. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here. Yeah. To be ready means that if my life lines up with what the word of God says about me, then when he comes. I don't have to worry about where I'm going. Yeah. Amen. Are we perfect? By no stretch of the imagination, yeah. are we perfect? Yeah. But God has given us choice. Mm -hmm. And we have made wrong choices in our lives Amen. over and over and over again. Yeah. Amen. And he's shown us to still be the same God yes. that not only will forgive us, but help us get ourselves back in line. Yeah. 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 So why we can't make the choice mm. to serve him yeah. till the day I die. And see, we have to get away from this misunderstanding of believing that serving God until the day you die means that you become this holier than thou saint. I come by to tell you that some of them folks that's holier than thou, they don't miss heaven because that ain't good. Right, right, right. You so earthly holy that you ain't no heavenly good. All right. Have I got a witness? Yes. Because when you so sanctified that you don't even see the flaws in yourself. Yes, yes, yes. You are destined to miss heaven. Uh -huh. God didn't say that when you accepted him as your personal savior, mm. that you're supposed to, connect, to, to disconnect yourself from the world. Yes. But he did share with us that you are able to be in the world. Mm -hmm. Just don't be of the world. All right, all right. Have I got a witness? All right. Because you're hanging around with your friends that drink. Yes, Lord. Don't mean you got to drink. That's Amen. right. That's right. That's right. And I would say if you're hanging around with your friends that's still and you ain't got to steal, but shucks, you shouldn't be hanging around with your friends that's still. Yes, 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 yes. Because watch, they're still in the tangible. Mm -hmm. But the enemy got you in a position to try to steal your joy. All right, all right. Because even though you're not physically stealing from them. Yeah. You're still in the atmosphere where the enemy is operating. That's right. Yeah. And if it's five of them stealing and one of you that's mm -hmm. not, you're overpowered. Yes, yes. yes. And the enemy will come in and, and he'll steal your focus. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He'll, he can't steal your joy because he didn't give it to you, but I tell you what, yeah. he'll still throw some water on it to make it seem like it's water down. All right, down. all right now. Amen. Yes, Lord. If the enemy didn't give it to you, he can't take it from That's you, right. but he can mess with it. That's right. That's right. Have I got a witness? Yes, Lord. So if you know that your friends that you hang around, Josh, got bad habits, mm. 
God didn't appoint you to be the savior of the world. Right. He simply says this. I sent some to plant. Yes. I sent some to water. Yes. And I'll provide mm. the increase. All right. And sometimes your stance of doing what they not doing what they're doing mm. is either going to be the plant mm. or it's going to be the water. Amen. Mm. But then you got to hear what God says, that's enough. Yes, Move on. Mm -hmm. Have I got a witness? Amen. And don't look back. That's right. Because when you keep going, mm. you may never ever see the increase. Yes. yes sir. But just know that if God said it, yes. that it shall come to pass. That's right. Amen. That's right. Move on to your next assignment. Yes, and don't get stuck in a place. Yes, because my question is, will you be ready? Right now. Amen. All eyes closed. All heads bowed. <laughs> Gracious God, we thank you. We thank you, God, for sparing our life yet one more time to allow us another opportunity to make sure that we are getting ourselves ready. Oh, God, you are so magnificent and wonderful. The Bible declares that you have all power in your hands. And we thank you, oh God, that we are able to give your name praise, honor, and glory. We thank you that we are able to still be used by you. We thank you, oh God, that it benefits us that you love us the way you do. So we're asking, oh God, that if there's anyone here under the sound of our voice that is not quite ready that you prepare our minds, our hearts, and our spirits, God, to be ready at all times. Yes. Let us, Father God, have a sense of urgency to enhance our communication with you. Yes. Continue to lavish your love on us. Continue to speak to us that we may identify your voice no matter what the circumstance. Yes. Yes. God, we love you so much. Yes. We don't want to be down here, Father, not doing what is pleasing to you. For we know, God, that our ultimate goal is to stand before you and hear you say, well done. Yes, Lord. Mm -hmm. So, God, have your way in our lives. Yes, Lord. Do what only you can do. Yes. Use us like only you can. Yes, Get the glory out of everything we do. Yes, and we'll be ever so careful to give your name. Yes. All praise, honor, and glory. Yes. While all heads are bowed and eyes are closed, this is a time of the service where someone may want to get to know God for the pardon of their sins. Or you may want to rededicate your life. If that is you, just simply raise your hand. And the next call is for anyone who may be looking to find a church home. And if that is you, just simply raise your hands where you are. We would love to extend that to you and, and be your family. Amen. As we see that there is none, but there is still yet room at the cross. We ask you, God, to seal our prayer. We ask you to seal and hide this word in our heart to keep it from sinning against you. Then we ask you, God, to continue to move in our lives so that we can be what you call us to be and help advance your kingdom by all that we say, do, and how we live. And we thank you for it now. In the matchless name of Jesus, we pray. All of God's children said amen. Amen. And amen. Come on, rejoice. Put your hands together.